So what's coming up at Silver Dollar City? What do the next few years look like? What's next in the plans? I got some ideas. So I'm sitting outside because we've got family and the dog's going crazy. So I thought it'd be nice to let you see the great outdoors since it's a gorgeous day, especially to talk about a great place to visit outdoors, and that's Silver Dollar City. They're just opening up the brand new Fire in the Hole. I uh, actually get to go ride it here pretty soon. Can't wait. And they've got lots more coming. They've hinted at a couple things. There's other things that they haven't hinted at. And of course, it's always a little bit fun to speculate and what's going to happen. So I thought it'd be fun to talk about what is definitely coming, what may or may not be coming, and what might be just a pipe dream. So one of the first things that they've hinted at is they have said that there will be some changes to what's now called the Pumpkin Plaza. This is essentially uh, the little area that's right by the brand new Fire in the Hole ride, where they have the music, the dancing, the food, and other stuff during the fall festival. So it's food booths and it's fun, but it's very, very temporary looking. They have actually said on their social media that they do have plans for it, but they're not willing to announce those yet. So I was like, ooh, so what could they be doing there? And my thought is they may be turning this into a more permanent festival facility, not just for the fall, but possibly for other festivals as well. Uh, especially since there is now a way for it to connect to fire in the hole. This makes a natural loop that goes through. And so things that they may be doing there is I'm thinking they may add in a more permanent stage than what they've got. It's really kind of a temporary thing. Actually build a performing stage that has a green room, a storage room, uh, prep rooms, and some things like that, like most of the other stages do. Give it a cover so that way people on it can perform during... Uh, not so great weather. I'm thinking that the center of the area, they may leave the front open for dancing so that way they could still do the line dancing and other stuff that they do. But I would not be surprised if they take the center of it and build kind of a gazebo uh, covered seating area with picnic tables or other things that people can sit at and enjoy whatever is on the stage so that way they can use it not just for DJs but also for actual entertainment the tie-in with whatever festival is going on. If you think about the gazebo seating area that's over at uh, the Grand Expo, something like that on a bigger scale with more seating, tables, and places for people to eat. Well, why food? Because right now they've got the temporary food booths around the edges. I would not be surprised if they decide to actually build some permanent ones. And again, use this as an overall festival arena for all of their festivals. So during the spring, you have kind of an international festival. Hey, here's several different festival booths. Bluegrass and barbecue. Bluegrass bands performing on the stage. You know, two, three, four different barbecue places on the outside serving different food. And you can change it up for the festivals. And it becomes this wonderful, versatile area that helps tie everything in together. So I really can't see that. I expect to see more greenery, some planters. Uh, would not be surprised if they cover the gazebo with like vines and greenery. Uh, get a couple trees put back in there because right now it's very barren and uh, Mary Hershon probably would not be real keen on that. She loved her trees. But I expect to see them turn this from a temporary, really a conversion to of a spot that was a parking lot into something nicer and more permanent. And that will also provide walkway access from Grand Expo over to Fire in the Hole. Uh, just another means to get through. That's my first thought. Uh, second thought revolves around the Flooded Mine. Flooded Mine is also aging, kind of like Fire in the Hole, and its days are coming. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be able to be saved or updated. I think it's going to have to go through something like Fire in the Hole. I don't think they're going to move it, though. Just because people are so used to where it is, I wouldn't be surprised if what they end up deciding to do there is actually level the ride and rebuild it in the same spot. With a new version, updated effects, updated story, I have a feeling something's going to have to be done because the building, again, is aging and not aging well. The ride is unfortunately going to have to disappear. 
So what do you do? People love that ride. You need indoor rides, especially during spring and fall when we get the thunderstorms. You've got to have stuff that can be open. I expect a re redone flooded mine. Pretty similar in size. I don't expect a lot of changes as far as the size goes. Uh, it is possible that they may decide to tear it up a little bit, kind of like Splash Mountain has different levels. But I don't necessarily expect to see a uh, drop per se. Just, you know, hey, let's come up and that way we can build a couple levels and have some fun with it. Other than that, I don't see a whole lot of changes for that area. There has been some speculation by a couple people that they're going to level the flooded mine and the train station and make what goes there much, much bigger. I don't know that I see that because you've got to be careful with the congestion that's already in that area. Talking with other people at the park, nobody in the park seems to be aware of the train station moving, which is kind of a key to that whole thing. Um, when I bring it up and I talk to people, they're kind of like, I haven't heard that. So I don't think that the train station's moving. I don't think they're expanding it. But they're going to have to do something with Flood of Mine. So look for a similar thing to Fire in the Hole, except at the same location. And it's probably going to be a couple years with nothing there while they build it. That's a guess. As far as the old Fire in the Hole site... Uh, they're, again, related to the flooded mine. There's people that are proposing a new train station there. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I do believe there will eventually be a new train station, but I believe it's going to be part of an expansion, and I'll come to that later. What I see the f old fire in the whole site, they've got plans for it already. I know they do. They may very well put in another ride, possibly another indoor ride. They're going to have to level the old building. There's no museum there. There's no saving it. It's in bad shape. It's got to go. So, in fact, I think they may even already be in the process of putting up walls and getting ready to uh, demo. Expect demo coming up pretty soon if they haven't started. It's got to go. I would imagine possibly an indoor ride, possibly some other small attraction. It's a big space. It's a great place for another indoor restaurant. Silver Dollar City could use another indoor restaurant. They need something. Uh, for the, when the bad weather hits, let people come inside and eat. Uh, so it, it's a great place for one. I think you'll see some shops coming in. The other thing I think that's going to happen in that area is right now it's a dead end. Uh, you can kind of come backwards a little bit over by the saloon and then walk back onto the path. Outlaw Run is also a dead end. And Outlaw Run is literally right on the other side of the tracks from where... Uh, fire in the hole used to be there's actually even a gate that you can walk down i would not be surprised at all if they basically take that gate area and open it up and bring a path and at least create a loop there now the, of course the train tracks run right through there as well so there is a good possibility they may have to do something with that but i think that they're going to work on something there with the tracks uh, to try to provide access over to Outlaw Run. It's it's an interesting little area, but they're going to do something to eliminate the dead end. The other very strong possibility is right now, Outlaw Run's got a path that goes out towards the woods. It's a dirt path. And they can use this as an opportunity to actually even go back more. They could build back that way and then put an access down over to that other pot spot and use it to expand out and expansions coming in any case i think that site's going to end up being it could be a, a restaurant shops uh maybe another indoor attraction and then like i said access out expansion's the big thing here if you've been to the park in the last few years you've noticed that the parking lot has massively increased in size why well, one, it needed the parking, but two, they're looking at what's happened with Dollywood over the last 15 years. Dollywood has literally doubled in size, and its attendance has more than doubled. It has just skyrocketed. Uh, Dollywood has gone from one of the smaller parks up into the top 10, attendance-wise, consistently. And I think they're looking at Silver Dollar City now and using the lessons they've learned and gone, we can do that here. Same company, same ideas. They've got a huge amount of property going all the way down to the lake. They've bought up all this property kind of adjoining going out west. So look for it to expand out into the woods. Expect what we now call the MNC area 
to get moved and redone because that is a prime expansion area. Um, in fact, where Fire in the Hole now sits, as well as the plaza area, that used to be parking for the maintenance guys. Uh, so they've already taken that. They're making plans of moving a lot of that area out. They're going to use it for park expansion. Don't be surprised if you see a gate come from uh, Fire in the Hole and Fireman's Landing going out to the woods. Another one from Outlaw Run going out. There's a huge opportunity to just take that and build this huge loop out there and expand the park and add all sorts of stuff to it. I have a pretty strong suspicion. And I have another pretty strong suspicion that kind of somewhere in the back of that loop, they're going to add a resort. They've done this recently at Dollywood. They've seen great success. They've got the land for it. Don't be surprised. Um, and I think this may be one of the announcements coming sooner rather than later is that they're building a resort for Silver Dollar City guests that will have its own entrance, its own shuttle means, provide uh, tickets to come into the park. And it's going to give them an opportunity to allow people to come in and be at the park for a couple of days. Dollywood's had great success with it. Disney and Universal have had huge success with this in the past. Silver Dollar City is going to jump on board. Uh, they've got the land. They've got the opportunity. Look for a Silver Dollar City resort to be coming soon. Uh, and like I said, I think it's going to be on the west and south side of the park, which is the area that uh, goes out towards Branson West. It's not developed yet. It gives them a great opportunity to build essentially an anchor for this park expansion. So you've got the front entrance now, which, by the way, I also fully expect to uh, see that redone a little bit. Um, because if the crowds double, it's not going to be able to handle the crowds. But I'm sure they're already thinking about that. Uh, I do believe that the resort will have its own entry probably on the other side of the park. So you end up with two ends of the park open. Uh, but don't be surprised if they end up redoing the entry and making a means to allow more people to get in and out and also just the whole parking drop off and pick up area because if they expand they're going to need to get that area opened up a bit more and, and more people to be able to come in and out uh, so yeah redone entry is very possibly in the cards with expanded crowds so that's where i can see some of the things happening with silver dollar city coming up in the future uh the Pumpkin Plaza being redone to a year-round festival plaza with entertainment and food and seating. Uh, I see Flood of Mine getting redone. I see the old fire in the whole site getting turned into uh, potentially another ride. Uh, expansion with shops and food and very possibly uh, the beginnings of expansion. Uh, expansion also going out through Outlaw Run and uh, Fireman's Landing and looping out into the woods, big time expansion. Uh, see a resort being added. Honestly, over the next 10 to 15 years, I think you're going to see Silver Dollar City double in size. Don't be surprised. Um, I think it's way overdue. It's coming. And I'm excited about the future. Uh, they've got a great past ahead of them. Or a great future in the past. Or something like that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm excited about the future. I hope you are too. Let me know what you think. Do you think I'm right on? Do you think I'm off? Do you think uh, there's other things happening? I'd love to know your input. Uh, what rumors have you heard? I don't usually do rumors, but hey, this could be a fun time. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much to my supporters and my patrons. Their financial help makes all sorts of stuff possible and gives me opportunities to get into the park and dream a bit. If you want to know more about financial support and the perks and benefits that come with it, be sure to check the description below. Thank you so incredibly much for watching. God bless. I actually get to go ride it here pretty soon. Can't wait. Uh, okay. Uh, I would not be surprised if they end up keeping it there. As far as the old flood fire in the hole, my, who the old flooded fire in the hole? <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of where I see some things happening with Silver Dollar City in the past. In the past. Yeah, you got a great pass ahead of you. Thank you. If you want to know more about that, the. the I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Please let me know your thoughts, your comments, your suggestions, your ideas. Be sure to share them in the comments below, or you can contact me. There's information in the description that has my email address, fan pages, information about merchandise, and so much more. So be sure to check that out. Don't forget to hit that like button, share the video, and if you haven't already, hit the button right up there to subscribe. And in fact, if you did enjoy this, I've even got another video for you right here. And also about these wonderful people here, those are my YouTube members and my patrons, the ones whose financial support makes this possible. I couldn't do it without them. If you want to know more about that and the perks that come with it, well, be sure to check the description. There's a link right down there. Thank you so incredibly much. God bless.